Our third class of chemotherapy agents are mitotic inhibitors. They start at the bottom of page 223 and go on to page 224, and you can see that there's two subcategories, um, plant alkaloids and taxanes. And I have here um, something to remind you that these are plant alkaloids. They come from plants. Here we have the periwinkle plant, and this is a yew tree. And normally I don't get into Latin names, but I wanted to this time, and I'll explain why. Um, the Latin name for periwinkle is vinca. You have vinca major, vinca minor. I think um, this is the Madagascar periwinkle, so it's going to be vinca major, I think. And this is not just any yew tree. This is a Western Pacific uh, yew tree. And so it's called the Pacific Texas brevifolia. And the reason that I'm telling you those names is because the names of the chemotherapy match the Latin names for the plants from which they're derived. So we have vincristine, vinblastine, anything that starts with V-I-N you're going to know is um, comes from a plant, the periwinkle plant, and is one of the mitotic inhibitors. And then taxol or paclitaxel comes from this Pacific taxis brevifolia. And if you take the PAC of Pacific and match it with the TAX, you can see how it forms paclitaxel. And that one's probably even more important than vincristine because later on when we get into um, hormonal therapies, there's another drug called tamoxifen. And you may not have any trouble with it, but I, for some reason, always get taxol and tamoxifen mixed up in my mind and they're very different. And so if I can remember paclitaxel, meaning Pacific Taxus brevifolia, that might help me or might help you um, differentiate taxol from tamoxifen. First, we're gonna talk about um, vincristine. Um, another form of it is vinblastine. They're enough similar that we can talk about one and cover what you need to know about both of them. Side effects, they're gonna have this that we've been talking about, the um, alopecia, they're going to lose their hair, skin problems, bone marrow suppression, all the things that go with that, and of course all the uh, GI epithelium. An additional thing that happens with vincristine um, that differentiates it from other classes of, of chemotherapeutic agents is the neurotoxicity. And I've listed some of the um, things that result from neurotoxicity, numbness, tingling, ataxia, foot drop, um, what we call neuropathy. You usually hear that word um, preceded by the word diabetic, like diabetic neuropathy, but we can also have neuropathy associated with vincristine. So we're going to monitor for this neurotoxicity um, with vincristine that we really wouldn't see with some of the other chemotherapeutic agents. The next class under mitotic agents, so again, um, vincristine is a mitotic inhibitor and taxol or taxanes are another type from the, just from different types of plants. Taxol is um, kind of a scary thing because it's administered IV and most chemotherapeutic agents are administered IV. There's a few that you can give um, orally, but most are given IV. This one needs to be given under um, direct supervision of a physician and a chemo nurse because um, hypersensitivity so frequently results and that would be when the person is actually getting the infusion so it would it would be immediate so people always get taxol um, when there's um, in the hospital or um, in a physician's office if they have some rescue agents available because of the high risk of hypersensitivity. And here I pulled up, this is anaphylaxis, which is a, a similar term to hypersensitivity. It's just the next step. So symptoms of anaphylaxis, hive, swelling, itching, um, shortness of breath and chest tightness. That's a biggie with Taxol. Cramps, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. These be hard to distinguish since that's side effects of everything. And then this drop in blood pressure. So the drop in blood pressure and the um, chest tightness, shortness of breath, anytime a patient exhibits those signs when they're receiving Taxol, it's a pretty big deal. And that tells us that we need to stop the medication and do something. Again, I went to your NCLEX review and found some questions related to the mitotic inhibitors. This one is about vincristine. Um, the nurse monitors the client knowing that which adverse effect is 
specific to this medication. So again, we have diarrhea, hair loss. Those are not specific to mitotic inhibitors. We've had that image on every single one so far. So um, that doesn't go with vincristine. So we're left with chest pain and extremity numbness. Well, I know extremity numbness, I had that um, picture of the foot with tacks in it, right? So I know that's right. Chest pain was related to the other mitotic inhibitor, the taxanes, and that would be one of those signs of the hypersensitivity or um, impending anaphylaxis is the chest pain, the drip, blood pressure is going to drop, that kind of thing. And so our rationale is, again, peripheral neuropathy is one of the things that's specific to the mitotic inhibitors, especially vincristine. The next two questions are about the taxanes, and this one I didn't go over, so I'm glad it came up. We can talk about it a little bit. Um, Taxotere is prescribed for a client with metastatic breast cancer. In addition, dexamethasone is prescribed to be administered before initiation of the docetaxel. What is the rationale for the addition of dexamethasone to the treatment plan that the nurse should explain to the client? Dexamethasone is a corticosteroid, and a lot of times it's going to prevent some of the side effects that result. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't help much with neutropenia. In fact, um, corticosteroids can further depress um, the bone marrow. And so again, it's not going to prevent thromboembolic disorders either. Um, reduces the severity of fluid retention. Yeah, and that is the right answer. Um, and that's kind of hard to picture because we all know that also, corticosteroids, if you're not on chemotherapy, um, they can cause a little bit of swelling on their own. But in this case, um, fluid retention can be pretty bad with the taxanes, and um, it's a result of inflammation, all of the cell death resulting in inflammation. And so dexamethasone, being a corticosteroid, reduces inflammation, and so it's really going to help with the severity of the fluid retention. Um, here it even points out that it's going to reduce the chance of a hypersensitivity reaction. Again, hypersensitivity is an inflam inflammatory response, and that's what corticosteroids are good for. The next question is also about a taxane paclitaxel. Nurse monitors the client closely for which side effect of the medicine. Insomnia, we didn't talk about that. Bradycardia, yeah, we did talk about that some. And that results, um, low heart rate, low blood pressure, can result when someone's having that hypersensitivity reaction. Constipation, we didn't go into. And hypertension, no, we said hypotension, low blood pressure is what's going to result when someone's having that hypersensitivity type reaction. And here it gives you um, a little bit better explanation. Next we have kind of an interesting question about vincristine. So these are the, the periwinkle, the vinca plant. A client with bladder cancer is receiving cisplatin and vincristine. The nurse plans care knowing that which is the purpose of administering both of these medications. Um, this is interesting because we just talked about cisplatin and we know it's an alkylating agent and often these two are used in combination. So based on when we talked about tuberculosis treatment and HIV treatment, we talked about that one of the reasons that we use combo medications is this medication resistance, right, to prevent that. And also, um, Reduced medication toxicity means that we can use a little bit less of each one of these because together they're going to work more. And so we'll have fewer side effects from the cisplatin and fewer side effects from the vincristine because we're using lower doses of each. And so it does both of these. And here's the, the rationale. It reminds you that um, the cisplatin is alkylating agent and use of combinated combination medication decreases resistance. And finally we have um, a question about hair loss, which it involves vincristine, but really this would go for um, hair loss associated with any of the chemotherapeutic agents. And the client tells the nurse that she's been told by her friends that she's going to lose all of her hair, and the nurse makes which appropriate response to client. Um, this is one of the things that um, people really worry about, and as nurses maybe we don't um, 
take it quite, we don't think of it as being as serious as some of the other things like um, the bone marrow suppression, but for the person experiencing it, especially females, um, losing your hair is just a, a huge deal and it's something that people worry about a lot. And so this is one of those psychosocial questions. Let's look. Your friends are correct. That sounds kind of cold. You will not lose your hair. That's a big fat lie. Hair loss may occur, but it will grow back just as it is now. Uh, not quite. And of course, our fourth choice, and when in doubt, choose the longest one, right? Hair loss may occur and it will grow back, but it may have a different color or texture. And to some people, that's um, a small comfort to think that, hmm, when my hair goes back, maybe it'll be a different color or something. And, and um, I don't know, some people like to look forward to that, but it just sounds like the best answer of all of those. I'm going to try to get one more category in on this um, cut, anti-tumor antibiotics. Um, one thing you need to know about these is they treat the widest variety of malignancies. So these are some of the ones that you will see the most of. Doxorubicin and donorubicin. Rubicin comes from the um, Latin term and think of ruby meaning red. And these are bright red medications. And kind of like rifampin treatment for TB, they can make... Um, body fluids red so tears sweat everything can turn red in addition to the red medication so sometimes this medication is called the red devil um, also because of the side effects that it has and then the other ones that you frequently see in anti-tumor antibiotics are bleomycin and mitomycin and so not always mycins are in this category but a lot of times they are and definitely when you see this rubo um, remember the red devil and anti-tumor antibiotics does all of these things that we've been talking about, the bone marrow suppression, stomach, all of that. Additionally, we have um, cardiotoxicity and pulmonary fibrosis or pneumonitis, and these can be pretty serious with these. And this is another reason why it's called the red devil is because um, it can be really hard on your heart and hard on your lungs, which is, those are pretty important. Those are a little bit worse than the usual, typical nausea, vomiting, hair loss. Um, cardiotoxicity, you know, can be deadly. We'll quickly look at some practice NCLEX questions that go with these. Um, this person is taking donorubicin. We're monitoring for commonly expected side effects. So really, we don't even know, need to know what specifically we're looking for. Commonly expected side effects. What have you seen on every single slide that I've done? Yeah, nausea, vomiting on any type of chemotherapy. Here we're talking about the doxorubicin. This is a side effect select all that apply. Alopecia can occur, yep, with everything. Um, stool may be white, I don't remember that. Cardiotoxicity, yeah, I remember I said on these um, anti-tumor antibiotics, um, heart and lungs are affected. Urine and sweat may turn red, yep. Rubicin, remember ruby red. The medicine is administered by the IV route. Yep, it's bright red IV stuff and promptly reporting signs of bleeding to the healthcare provider. Of course, that goes with our bone that was in every single slide that we've done. This question is getting more into the things that are specific to anti-tumor antibiotics. Again, we have one of the rubicins, Donna rubicin, which sign symptom should indicate to the nurse that the client is experiencing a toxic effect related to the medication. Fever. Um, we might get that with others, diarrhea, all of them, nausea, vomiting, all of them. Here we go, crackles on aus auscultations of the lungs. Remember how I told you that these rubicins, especially the red devil drugs, are specifically hard on the heart and lungs. Um, here it lists cardiotoxicity, and again, the, um, the lungs, it's hard on those too. The last question I found related to this specific, the anti-tumor antibiotics, was over bleomycin, and I thought this question was really hard. Um, squamous cell carcinoma of the larynx, that kind of gives us a clue, is receiving bleomycin IV. Of course, they all have to be given IV. The nurse caring for the client anticipates that which diagnostic study will be prescribed. Um, probably the best clue you have of getting this one right is thinking about the larynx and how it's part of the respiratory system. And so there is this one response that has to do with the, specifically to the respiratory system. The reason I thought this question was so hard is because um, echocardiogram, 
those kind of things, you know, that has to do with the heart somewhat. And so I think it would just be hard to, to pick which one of those. They all sound pretty good answers. But here you can see the rationale. Um, it has to do with that pulmonary fibrosis and so pulmonary function studies. And we did talk about how these anti-tumor antibiotics are hard 